Well, now, at almost any point in the 20th century, you could have found influential figures offering an alternative analysis to the idea now commonplace in all three main political parties that there's nothing intrinsically wrong with capitalism, that it's just a matter of how it operates. According to Marxist interpretation, selfishness and inequality aren't an aberration, but the natural product of capitalism. Now, Marxists aren't quite on the endangered species list yet. Indeed, the grand old man of British Marxism, the historian Eric Hobsbawm, published a new edition of his book, How to Change the World, at the age of 94. I went to speak to him earlier today. Eric Hobsbawm, the Prime Minister was talking today about responsible capitalism. Do you think such a thing exists? As an economic system, capitalism has nothing to do with responsibility. It has to do with uh, growth, with making profit. Over the last 40 years, it seems to me, capitalism developed a sort of pathological degeneration of the uh, Adam Smith line, in which you believed that responsibility had absolutely nothing to do with it, because all good results, such as they were, would arise and. Uh, from the operations of the free market, provided the free market were left completely free. What he's really talking about, though, is just capitalism, isn't it? The idea that capitalism can exist alongside some sort of social, moral system in which there is a degree of equity. It can if it is made to. By itself, there is nothing to make it fun function like that at all. Why is it, do you think, that uh, when we see capitalism clearly in crisis in the West now, why is it that no one else is reaching for these uh, Marxist utopian solutions? Marx isn't a utopian solution. Uh, Marx is a, a definition of the problems which we have to deal with and with which capitalism cannot at present deal. And the major problem at the moment, which is going to be very, very hard for anybody to deal with, is that what was the transformation of the world through capitalism and high technology and the enormous, extraordinary advance, I think, one element of production has become surplus to requirement, namely people. If we go on developing, what happens to the people who previously managed to get in on the system largely through, through getting jobs, getting good living jobs or bad living jobs, but jobs. And we can see some of the problems right now in uh, de-industrialized areas. What happens, particularly to the men, if there are no longer any jobs? When you look at the riots last summer, for example, do you think they have a political element to them? I think the riots were a reaction to a society of demoral that is demoralized, that doesn't know what happens. These particular riots weren't, I think, particularly political, and it would be a mistake to read that into. But the fact that a large number of people are demoralized because there's nothing for them to do is more than the temporary phenomenon of uh, unemployment. Once upon a time, 80% of the population of the world were farmers. And that's the only way we could get the food. Nowadays, we can get all the food we want with maybe 2% or less of people in farming. Now, this is happening with the other parts of production too. And that's where the real danger lies. So what do you make of the Occupy movement? The interesting thing is the response. The response both on the part of ordinary people to see that this extraordinary inequality, social and economic inequality, which to some extent is seen also as a sort of moral inequality in most cases, 
uh, is intolerable. The idea that even among the capitalists, that this isn't what they were supposed to be producing. And to that extent, the lack of self-confidence in capitalism at the moment is one element that we have to count into the crisis. Well, you're just an old Marxist clutching at straws, aren't you? I'm not clutching any straws because I'm pessimistic. I doubt whether, in fact, a solution will be found. But eventually, it no doubt will be. But I suspect that we are looking forward to a rather uh, stormy uh, period in the next 20, 30 years. Eric Hobson, thank you very much.